Good evening, everybody. This is Ben Powers coming at you from a special episode of the Commander's Voice. My guests tonight are uh, retired Special Forces Captain Joey Avanoff, my good friend George Luz Jr., and a new friend, uh, Stephen Spears, who is a uh, experienced sculptor who is working on a new project for uh, commemorating the French resistance in Normandy. So good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. So what I want to do you real quick is... Be here. Hey, Stephen, we're, we're thrilled to have you. And I want to start with you real quick to just kind of get your background established. And then I want to roll into the story of how you guys met and what's going on with the Normandy uh, Monument and the fundraising to get that project to fruition. So it, it's my understanding you're a, uh, a longtime artist. You've got presence on the East Coast and in Colorado, and you've done other military themed statues in the past to include one to the, the 28th Infantry Division in France. You worked on the, the Dick Winters Leadership Memorial, and you also did the Utah Beach Navy Memorial, among others. Is that correct? That Yes, that's correct. I've been a professional full-time sculptor for, I guess, a little over 25 years now. And uh, um, it's it's something that basically, I, I, I grew up in a military family and art and scouting were the two constants everywhere we moved. So uh, it's my way of giving back, basically, and, and letting, uh, letting the, the tributes to the people you know, be be seen long after we're gone, hopefully. So um, I've had the, the great privilege of being able to uh, work on some some tributes that are there in Normandy, and the one that we're working on getting together now will also go out there. Oh, fantastic. What I kind of like to start with is a very quick discussion of how you did the Navy Memorial, how you got involved in that project, what it represents. And then, because that's kind of, my understanding talking to you fellas before we started recording, that was sort of the piece that piqued Joey's interest and you guys all started getting together. So if you could talk about the Navy Memorial and then we'll just start a little round robin of how each link of the chain came together to get us to this point. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, I, uh, I was living on the Gulf Coast of Alabama at the time. I uh, had actually, uh, started my first public monument, and uh, as things went, it, the uh, son-in-law of the person that I was doing the monument of uh, happened to be the historian general for the Naval Order of the United States, and he was in San Diego at uh, their National Congress and doing a presentation with some uh, tour guides from Normandy, and they happened to mention that even though the, uh, the D-Day invasion was the, the largest amphibious assault in history, uh, there was no tribute to the Navy there in Normandy, and yet there was one for every other country and every other branch of service that participated. So, of course, that, uh, that drew the ire of everyone in, in the, uh, the auditorium. And as it happened, uh, my good fortune was having that monument already started of the historian general's father-in-law. He stood up at the podium and said, I know a sculptor. So he, uh, he got in touch with me, asked if I would be interested and followed that with the, the comment that we've never done anything like this and we don't have any money. So, uh, I, I grew up, you know, I, I love history. And I just, I said, whatever we need to do, let's make it happen. And um, it did eventually. So it, it took a little longer than we had projected, but it also ended up getting hauled around, dodging hurricanes and things in the process, including on the way out to Normandy on a, a ship during hurricane season. So um, there's always interesting obstacles in, involved with this, but uh, it, there's, there's a, a really great feeling in knowing that you're doing something that is going to tell a story of people who gave the ultimate sacrifice and, uh, and change the, basically the course of, of our history. So um, that, was, that was how the Navy Monument got started. 
Now, when was that unveiled? When did it actually get to Normandy and people saw it for the first time where it currently sits? 2008, I believe, if I remember correctly. And uh, there were a couple of phases to it. Um, the initial diagrams and things were done showing the five-sided base as um, symbolic of the internal shape of the five-pointed star, which represented the U.S. and, and its symbolism. And each one of the five sides also represented the uh, five beachheads uh, in Normandy. Um, uh, you know, I thought it would be great to list the ships that went in on, on D-Day. And uh, I found out the hard way that there was no neat list uh, of that. So that, that became an interesting challenge, doing that research, which I loved to do. And um, butted a few heads along the way, which happens. But um, it, it, was, it was pretty special getting to know the, the CBs that, that came to participate in building the, the platforms and things there for the dedication ceremony on Utah Beach, uh, getting to know the, the French people there and, and just seeing what happens there in Normandy, the way that they show honor and respect to our veterans you can't help but be proud. It's it's incredible. It really is. So um, that has a lot to do with my enthusiasm about the current project. Awesome. And, so speaking, uh, oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Please finish your thoughts, Stephen. No, 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 no. That, that's good. I was, I was going to say, so this, the, then I would like to kind of fast forward to the current project. Folks who listen to the show know that Joey and George, and George have been on before together. George has been on uh, on a few episodes. This is Joey's second time back, but they met in Normandy uh, a few years back. And I know that Joey and Stephen have only been talking to each other for, for less than a year now. But Joey, I'd love to take it from here because it's my understanding the project you're working on, the current one for the French Resistance, you were inspired to reach out to Stephen when you saw some of his work. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so in the spring when COVID lockdown uh, started of last year, um, as a practitioner, I was studying uh, resistance organizations, you know, historical counts, vignettes, and um, I really gravitated towards the French resistance, uh, which is the quintessential, you know, UW, uh, unconventional warfare, like in uh, counter, I wouldn't even say counterinsurgency because they were occupied force, but you know, an actual uh, insurrection of an occupied force, and the construct is very is stapled exactly to modern stuff that we do now or conceptually. So I started to peel that back, and as a amateur student of military history, I started to tie together like, you know, the French resistance. It could arguably be considered the most uh, um, con uh, contributing shaping operation to Operation Overlord, right? Uh, and and not just during and after, but the buildup of all the preparation, the environment before the invasion happened. And I'm thinking about this as I've been uh, studying. And then one night I watched uh, Navy Heroes of Normandy on Amazon Prime. Uh, Tim, uh, Tim Gray film. And I usually search those because he makes some pretty good stuff. And uh, I run across that uh, documentary, start watching it. And just like Stephen was saying, it was like, how did, how did we not recognize this, which is in a, another significant shaping operation, right? To Overlord, the decisive operation. And it was like, wow. This is exactly what I was just thinking about. And they just now did this, you know, and it was just a few odd years as you were saying, 2008. So I'm like, man, they really should, you know, and I started digging deeper. And then I, I hit up a, a good buddy of mine, um, Andy Anderson, he's a retired SF Colonel. He's kind of like the diplomat of St. Mary Glees in the United States. He's just, he's everywhere. And uh, I, I he, he knows a lot of people and events and stuff that happens. I said, hey, you know, I, I've been thinking about this. I think you should do something about it. You should find somebody to, to, to do this monument because of this, you know, just like the, the Navy monument came late. I think that's something for the French resistance to commemorate their contribution 
should be should be done. And and just as Stephen said, because one, uh, the French, what they do when you get to go there, you see how they treat our our veterans. It'll blow you away, man. It'll just touch your heart. And yeah. and they're and they're so selfless. So it. it and then thinking about their history, like why don't they recognize their own, you know, their their own lineage to 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 making this happen? Would not have would not have happened. And I can itemize a lot of events. Not that you know, I could from the if I had a time machine, but I, I honestly think that it would not have worked out the way that it did if it were not for the contributions of the French Resistance and pushing into op, to Cobra of punching out of Normandy. And he's you know he's like yeah I think you're really onto something. Uh, Good luck. I was like, wait, what? That's not what I want. I wanted you to get someone. He goes, you got this. <laughs> so he introduces me to uh, Kathy Soroff, who had uh, of Operation Democracy and Kay Winninger. And I basically, you know, sell them on the idea as a vessel. And they've been very supportive so, you know, to host the, the fundraiser. And so once I had that figured out, I was like, I was like, well, I need to talk to this guy, Stephen, because he gets it. You know, watching the documentaries, I ended up watching Hang Tough, uh, which is also uh, a documentary about the Dick Winters uh, leadership memorial he did. And it kind of follows throughout, you know, the reason behind it and then you know, the decision to do it and how they did it and, and making the monument and dedicating it. And they interview Stephen and, you know, hey, why are you doing this? And I was like, OK, that's the guy. He gets it. And so, as he was saying earlier, you know, I start calling around and they, they give me a cell phone number. So, of course, he doesn't answer a strange phone call. And uh, I left a voicemail and then he called me right back. He goes, What do you want to do? Say it one more time. And I tell him, and He goes, I'm in. <laughs> and then he asked, He's like, Are you in Cairo Springs? I was like, Yeah. And he's like, Well, I am right now, too. I'm up at, on, in Garden of the Gods. And I said, I'm coming to you right now. He's like, Hey, let's just. This whole COVID things at the <laughs> so we figure it out a day and then uh, I come up to meet them and you know we start the process to do the uh, what do we call that again the maquette yeah, yeah. yeah. the model I'll let Stephen pick it up from here because I think I think he was a little taken okay. back like wait when do you want to do this <laughs> so but real quick before oh, we, we talk uh, about the maquette, I'd like to pull uh, George in for a second and talk a little bit about the Winners Memorial too. We focused on the Navy Memorial a little bit before, but since Stephen, I'd love to hear about the the slightly just real quick about the Winners Memorial as well, since that obviously played a part in uh, influencing Joey's decision to get the uh, to get the invitation out to Stephen because he's a kind of a guy who gets it, the Navy Memorial and the Winners Memorial. So. Uh, George, did you first meet Stephen uh, working on the Leadership Memorial for Normandy? Yeah, we did. Uh, you know, that one was dedicated in 2012. And it's interesting going through this little process here, you know, seeing the models. Uh, I, I went back to some really old pictures and I remember seeing the same type of models for the Winters Monument. So it's really interesting mm -hmm. to see the new stuff you're doing, Stephen. And uh, so, yeah, so oh. we met back at the that particular... Uh, documentary, I mean, that particular monument, and then uh, the subsiding uh, documentary, and then looking back uh, at the uh, the Navy uh, monument and documentary, I was mentioning that, you know, I typically in non-COVID years, I'm in Normandy at least a couple times a year, and I always bring our guests, point out the Navy monument, and have a discussion at the Winters Monument, so it's, it's really great to you know, I played just a very small role in uh, in the Winners Monument, but uh, but it was great to to just be involved and and then having met uh, uh, Joey at an event at the Utah Beach Museum. Now uh, we connected there; have been friends ever since. And and then when Joey gave me a call and said, "Hey, I've got this idea. I'm working on this uh, project, and I've got you know," he actually had everything in place. And uh, so you know, he and he had an aggressive an aggressive timeline and I was never going to say hey that's an aggressive timeline to a special forces guy as as, as he touches his beard <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I just said hey that's fantastic and then when he said you know he brought Stephen on I said well you know you couldn't get anybody who was better acclimated to do something as big 
uh, as Stephen in this particular project. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And as you've indicated, George, it's an aggressive timeline. So it's already uh, the spring of 2020 when Joey and, and Stephen hook up to start talking about this mock ed. So we'll, I want to take it back over to you, Stephen, so you can kind of discuss that process. Oh, the, this, the design, is, this is a good one. <laughs> This, this is this is one of those things that uh, when all this is done, it's going to be pretty amazing to, to look back on because, I mean, they all are. Every one of these projects are, are amazing. But this one, uh, you know, I, I met Joey when he, he did come by the gallery where I, I was in Colorado Springs. And as soon as we started talking, we both realized the passion we both have, not only for, for what happened in Normandy, but, you know, I, I feel, uh, um, like I, I mentioned, a duty, basically, that uh, is beyond what I'm able to do for, uh, you know, people that, that give their all in the service. And Joey was, you know, retired, or he wasn't retired. He was active duty. And when I met him, was going to be deployed within the next month. So, um he presents this concept to me. I said, I love the idea. This is, this is something that is like the missing piece in the story for what happened in Normandy. And it really has to be told. And not only that, it needs to be something that is giving back to the French people for all they do for the veterans. And he said, well, great. We need to have it by, you know, D-Day uh, of 2021. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. No, that's, that's, you know, I, I don't think that can happen. And he goes, well, if, if there are no issues, if there's no problems, if everything just, you know, was to start right now, is it possible? And I said, well, you know, I could, I could talk with every, everyone in, that would be involved and try and line it up. And if it's seamless, I guess it, it might be able to happen. So of course, you know, we, we start and, and things and it's a pandemic. It's, uh, you know, throw, throw everything you can at the fan. It was all coming back at us. And, um, you know, what would have taken a, a year, basically from May uh, of 2020 when we met, would have been near to impossible. It didn't really start, physically start sculpting the monument until November because of all of the things that were occurring. Uh, and so the logistics are, are kind of miraculous in how things are working out, but with the help of, of, of everyone, and, and you know, thank you for putting this out there on your podcast, uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it in literally one third of the time it typically would need to be done. And, uh, you know, it, it all kind of, in, in my mind, I, I mentioned this to Joey because, you know, Joey's getting ready to leave for deployment. His wife is expecting, you know, their, their second child. And I'm going, I, don't, I really don't think we can do this. I really don't think it's possible now. And he says, well, can't you just try? So, yeah, what am I going to say? So <laughs> that, that's what we're doing. And we're trying everything we can. And, uh, Regardless of all the obstacles, we just have gone right through them. So, um, you know, we still we still need this last push. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I didn't get to mention that you brought up, Ben, was that um, there was another monument that leapfrogged the Navy monument that went to where the first battle U.S. forces fought on foreign soil. And that was the 28th Infantry Black Lions of Cantini. And uh, that's in Cantini, France. And uh, the ceremony at that dedication was something I wish I had on film. I wish I could in some way express how moving it was because the representation of U.S. forces were there by you know, head of, head of uh, European command uh german forces were represented uh french forces were represented and the most moving thing i saw was the wreath laying ceremony when you have you know a, a four-star general walking out with a wreath and next to him is a, a little french child 
that their school was closed so they could be a part of this, holding a rosebud and a, and a little stub of a candle, walking hand in hand, side by side to lay that wreath. And that child literally knows more about that battle than 98% probably of the people in this country. And when you have your freedom taken from you, that's the kind of respect and understanding you have for what's been done. And it, it's just, it was incredibly moving. And uh, so this, this monument, this uh, in tribute to the French resistance and all they did to save the lives of everyone trying to push through on D-Day is incredibly important. And um, so, yeah, when Joey and I started talking about this, it's just, you know, it has to be done. And, and I, I'm just really proud to be a part of it. And that's a really amazing testament, Stephen. And the, the fact that you're talking about the, the children having such a knowledge of, of what took place in the past, I get the impression that's kind of fed into the, the, the current design. Because usually when you think about a, a war memorial, you've got, even if it's a not a heroic one, but it's, it's going to focus on a, a soldier in uniform in some kind of pose, whether in action or in repose. But uh, as I understand it, you guys have really put together a really neat design that shows all facets of the resistance and includes women and children. Could you guys talk a little bit more about that? Uh, I'll jump in on that and then hand it over to Stephen. Uh, and, and before you go into that, I wanted to just uh, save a little face here with the aggressive timeline. Uh, you know, levity aside of, of all the uh, aggravation, if you will, like a better way of putting it, 2021 was important to me because, hey, we're creeping on the 77th, and there are not a lot of these folks around or, you know, left, and, they're, and we're losing them by the day. So, and I'm just talking about our veterans and talking about theirs, uh, as in veterans of the FFI and, and their children that were present. You know, we're getting up there. And I know uh, that it's, it's D-Day uh, anniversary is like the uh, annual pilgrimage for people that celebrate the, the liberation of Europe, uh, you, you know, the action of. So having it there, have, you know, where everyone comes uh, in time, you know, one year earlier, uh, Two really, I think I, I think if Stephen had his way, it would, this would have happened uh, 2023. When I explained it to him, he's like, "You know what? You're right." He's like, "This is gonna suck, but you're right." <laughs> so uh, that 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 was the reason behind it. So it wasn't uh, anything of impatience. It's hey, let's get this done done right, so the, these people can see it before they're gone. Um, and and moving into the the construct of the monument of the three figures and studying Stephen's work, I thought about a little bit of the, the symbolism and uh, the construct of a, uh, of a uh, resistance is the underground, the auxiliary and the gorilla and the roles that they played specifically uh, within the French resistance. And I, and I lined that out to him, he goes, perfect. And that was really my only contribution, you know, because I'm not the artist, you know, I kind of can conceptually say, hey, this is what it is. Good luck. <laughs> but we have a relationship that, uh, you know, you bounce this, we go back and forth. And I think what's unique about this one is I think his previous work has been way more contractual. And this one is more of a conversation amongst friends. Yeah, I mean, looking back, it just isn't, there's not a lot of people involved. And it's really, if there's a conversation, it's as easy as a phone call and a FaceTime or a text. And, you know, we're, hey, what do you think about this? I'm good with it. You good with it? I'm good with it. I right, let's do this differently. And it's done, you know? Uh, and I love that about this. It makes it very easy. And as we keep peeling back <laughs> history and getting, uh, uh, you know, epiphanies and, and learning new things, it's really easy to change because it's just between him and I. So, but uh, you know, you have, and he's laughing, I know, because we get messages all the time of these uh, pros and, you know, these historians. And he warned me about this beforehand. 
because this is what he you know has done a few times. So it's been a little frustrating because you want to please everyone, uh, but that's the short of the short of it uh, of the story on how he came up with the concept of the uh, three figures. And there's a lot of symbolism 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 in it uh, with you know the the barrel the Calvados barrel that he came up with that's uh, you know specific to the area of Normandy the Calvados uh, apple cider is it apple cider or ap apple cider apple brandy apple brandy yeah uh, and then you know we we talked about the comms kit that is provided by the Brits uh, the SOE um, the stem gun. Uh, someone had a stem gun and it loaned it to him for him to reference, uh, and they have a tax stamp for it. Uh, so yeah, that's a second amendment joke. <laughs> so, so Stephen, building on what Joey kind of laid out there, you've got you know Joey's mm -hmm. giving you the insight he has as a uh, you know a, a pro professional special forces guy and a, and a historian of the FFI. You've, you've got a concept of what you want to show here. What kind of research did you do? Did you kind of look through different photographs or did you, did a lot of this come kind of from your, your own image of what this should look like? What, what kind of fed the process? Well, I, I love doing research. It's, I, I, I just absolutely love doing research and uh, having been to Normandy, it, you know, many times um it, it you kind of start to get the just the attitude and the feeling and the and the history uh from all of those trips um at the same time the, to me what's what's really important is is telling the story not necessarily specific to any particular individuals because when you focus on particular individuals you're always leaving someone out and that's not what we wanted to do. And the representation of the men, uh, the, the guerrilla fighter, the, the woman uh, sending the coded messages, and then the, the boy uh, and the bicycle, there's the Pierre bicycle with the, the story of the teenage boy that rode up and down the coast, drawing images of all of the, the German um, in, encampments and things. And befriending the Germans and saying, oh, I just, you know, I'm really impressed with what I see. And all of those detailed drawings went to the French resistance. So um, there are all sorts of interesting stories involved with this. And then even the, there's a, a, a carrier pigeon that's in a part of the sculpture, which is what the boy is delivering uh, the message from the carrier pigeon to the woman to send the coded message while the uh, the guerrilla fighter is there, you know, on guard at any given moment to, you know, be ready. So I, I think starting the story and then making the view or no, giving the viewer the inspiration to want to know more and to be guided to to try and understand more is is important to me. So the symbolism of every man, woman, and child coming together in France, where you know the the soldiers were already out of the picture. These were people being pulled off of farms, uh, wherever you know they were they were coming out of any place they could to try and do anything they could to make a difference. And uh, so the attitude is what's important to me with the the intensity of the the guerrilla fighter the um uh, the the dedicated really intense kind of of look uh, on the the woman and sending the coded message the fascination of the young boy watching it all happening and and you know seeing it and then the design to, to pull you around the piece so that you don't miss any of it is is really what is important to me because it's it's all storytelling and it's all giving the the, the message and the information long after we're gone and uh, so these are the things that were imperative to me um, you know that just talking with Joey from from his initial you know, planting the seed to us sharing our time and stories about Normandy, it, it just it just evolved right away. And uh, so I, the maquette was, the, the first little maquette was done very quickly. 
And unfortunately, I think Joey got the idea that that's how it all works. <laughs> but uh, hey, just push the, a button, get that thing out of here. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> and then the quarter scale maquette was was like nothing I'd I'd ever had to do before because of the pandemic. I did the the gorilla fighter and the woman there in Colorado. I had to get back to Maryland. And this was all in the middle of, you know, everything just going nuts with the pandemic. So I did the boy and the bicycle here in Maryland and then drove it back out to Colorado to try and get started on, on doing the monument. Had to put it all together, hoping every, the pieces would fit. And uh, so it, it's been unique in every aspect on how this is, is happening. And... Um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll keep we'll keep knocking every obstacle down, just just like they did in Normandy on D-Day. So, hey, just a, a, an addition, uh, Ben, to the monument that we're doing that I think is just incredible. Uh, well, the whole thing's incredible, but this this the enabling piece of uh, the so we or the Jedbergs of the OSS with the Brits, mm. BCRA, and the OSS agents. You know, the Jedbergs, which is a whole other conversation, but. 93 teams jumped into France, uh, 93 Jedburgh teams that enabled the, the French resistance. And the whole conversation of, uh, hey, getting history right, how he had a problem with the names of every LST, you know, they're, they're, they're getting the right stuff to get the exact na team names has been uh, pretty, pretty difficult. I'm there. I'll say I'm at a 99% solution because someone's going to call me and be like, you're wrong. And you got to <laughs> listen to them. So uh, there's going to be 93 ray, bronze raised canopies that'll be, that will surround the monument. And uh, they'll be broken into three sections, which is the three sections, the Jedburgh teams, the BCRA, the SOE, and the OSS. Again, a lot of uh, symbolism. And each canopy will have the jet team name scribed onto the, the raised canopy. Oh, that's and, powerful. Yeah. Fingers crossed he can he can talk that. He's hopefully he's got a skip hopefully. steps that he normally wouldn't this do. This is another one of those this is another one of those do do the undoable scenarios happening. So but we're gonna do it. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm I wanna jump in on this because this is something to me that I did not know much about as far as the Jedburgh teams. And I'm fascinated, absolutely fascinated by everything behind it. Um, that's, it's, it's similar in some respects to what I, I learned from doing the Navy monument with the, uh, the, the Navy combat demolition units and how they were, you know, basically uh, a, a stepping stone to the Navy SEALs. And so the Jedburgh teams, and in many ways are like the stepping stone to the special forces units like Joey was a part of. So um, I, I just, you know, that just adds so much more to the story, so much more to the meaning. And when, when you can see those things and where they originated from, when you can make that origin point a part of what the, this monument is about, uh, that means a great deal. So in in the symbolism and in the design that, that Joey mentioned, the uh, the raised uh, bronze parachute dome reliefs, there'll be three three walkways into the monument itself, and the 32 foot diameter of the uh, the site location represents the size of the chute that would be coming down from all of these Jedburgh teams. And they'll be basically around the perimeter, meaning that you know all of these these teams brought everything necessary for what is central to the monument and uh, the communications equipment, weapons, training, all of these things. So um, there's a a lot that I hope people will want to know more as a result of seeing this, and it's hopefully going to be something that invites them in to do that. And uh, so I, I love learning more about it. And, you know, thanks to, to Joey for setting this up. And, and, uh, 
and and you know th- thanks to George because George you know is he's the man behind the curtain and and you know in in the back there that you don't see who is out there spreading the word and and he's you know he's always instrumental in and in getting a lot of this information out and thanks to you as well Ben no worry so that this just the scale of this thing as you guys talk about it especially with the walkways incorporating the the, the Jegbird component is I cannot wait to see it someday number one but number two and this question is directed at, <laughs> this question is directed at you Joey how, how did and the last time you and I spoke you'd mentioned that this is going to be erected in the vicinity of St. Mary de Mont how did you coordinate with the local authorities to have a piece of land on which to erect this like how, how does one you know reach out as a private citizen in the United States basically I mean I realize you're an army officer or were at the time but you're doing this as a private entity saying hey I, I, we want to build a statue on you know your public lands or uh, exactly how did this go about I called him I said hey this is what I want to do and once I realized it was Charles I uh uh, Charles Develville, and I'm saying it with an American accent. He he's the current mayor, the newest mayor to Saint Marie de Mont. He's the owner of Breakwater Manor. I met him in 2012 when I was trespassing on his property with a map, looking for where the guns were in place. His dogs came out to greet me, and then he did in his rubber boots on a very rainy, muddy day. And you know, between my pointy <clears> tongue. <throat> in my map he figured out why i was there <laughs> and uh we talked for a while and uh what we could talk about and i would annually go see him when i was around and then come to find out he was the mayor and uh i got to meet up with them and said hey this is what i want to do he goes let's do it I-, I think it's great i think we should do it right here so i've i've you know uh, whatever you want charles if you make this happen uh i'll do my part we'll, and it'll come together and, and it has but he's very very easy to work with um and he is the actual head curator of the utah beach museum which his father opened in the 60s is that right Stephen? yeah the, the, that that museum is is there because of his family and uh yeah so it's it's all about relationships and things and and i know george and 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 Joey and and I all know Charles, and and uh, he's just been incredibly supportive in every way. So um, you know, it's it's a pleasure working with them. Oh, that's awesome! So I got I got two more questions, and this is kind of open forum. Anybody who wants to jump in. So number one, using Joey's methodology, assuming that there's no insurmountable obstacles that occur between now and June of 2021. Are y'all on track? That's question number one. And then number two is, what can the folks who are listening or watching do to help and how can they reach out? Steve, you lead it. Okay, I'll jump in if I can. Um, we're, we're, we're on track, uh, but it's a very, very, very fine track right now. And, uh, and you know, we still, we still are trying to raise funds for that, that final push. Um, I, I do want to mention that it's, there's a whole lot of people involved trying to make this happen. Um, everyone that I typically work with through the foundry and through shipping and through every other resource that I use in doing these projects have all stepped up above and beyond the call of duty to say, we'll do everything we can to make this happen. So right now we're just at the part that i know joey loves so much and that's raising that final bit of money to make it happen and we're getting there we're uh we're over half and uh our next payment to get this thing done is in may and then the additional funds is to ship this thing and have it dedicated and and to help contribute to the base with uh with the town of saint marie dumont but it's June 5th. We are on track um, for that thing to be done, shipped in May and dedicated June 5th. But that is if, if uh, you know, COVID doesn't mess things up. Now, I, I say we just full speed ahead on, on, on June 5th until told otherwise. 
Oh, that sounds like a plan. We, we, full speed ahead has been working for you folks so far. So uh, I'm just about out of time. Um, the guests tonight have been uh, Joey Avanoff, George Loves, and Mr. Steven Spears talking about the Normandy Resistance Monument and uh, how it uh, was the inception, the work that's been done thus far, and the goal to get it uh, shipped over to France and uh, dedicated on the 5th of June of this year, 2021. Gentlemen, does anyone have any final words they want to say, things they want to share, or anything I didn't touch on? Uh, one look. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. I was just going to say, this is something I've mentioned to Joey. I, I, as, as challenging as this is, this is a, a unique type of opportunity where you will not only see the result of, of what uh, your contributions are, but the, the result of those contributions will be around for generations to come. So any and every bit of help in, in making this happen is greatly appreciated. Uh, that's very well said, Stephen. Joey, do you want anything you want to add? Yeah, it, the the fundraising. As I said, it, it's a grind. It's really uh, daunting. Uh, so anything anyone can give, please go to Operation Democracy. Go to projects. Uh, the Normandy French Resistance Monument. There's a PayPal button. Hit, click on it. Send a dollar. Send two. Uh, whatever you can get because this is a grassroots citizen to citizen thing so it's there's, it gets built by the people that listen to this it doesn't get built by corporations or u.s government um but i tell you what it's don't get into fundraising <laughs> <laughs> so just one last time make sure we got so just go to a web web search for operation democracy when you get to the page hit projects look for normandy uh, monument and that's where you can donate by paypal that's correct Awesome. Fantastic. Well, once again, Joey, Steve, and George, thank you for joining me tonight. This has been a, been a really, really great opportunity to learn more about your project. Joey, my goal before the end of 2021 is to have you back on one more time because I'm dying to do a Jedberg episode. So just uh, I'm going to leave you be because I know you're, you're transitioning out of the military and you've got a, a young family to settle, but I'd really like to have you back on the show sooner rather than later. That's fine. Man. I just needed something else on my plate. Let's just write it in. <laughs> Fantastic. Steven, it's been wonderful you, to ben. talk to you thank tonight. Thank you, George. Hey, thank you all. Uh, you know, I'm great. Uh, it's grateful to to help out in any small way that I can. You know, uh, Steven, you're doing a great job. Joe, Joey, uh, you know, you, you've got an aggressive plan. And, and Ben, thank you so much for having us on. Fantastic. Well, once again, everybody, this has been Ben Powers from the Commander's Voice. Please go to... Uh, Operation Democracy, uh, give if you can, and we really look forward to reporting in the future about this project coming to a successful conclusion. Thanks and have a great night.